Well, once again, good evening from isolated southwest France. I do hope that everyone has passed a pleasant Sunday. I know I have. It's that time of day again when stomachs need to be filled, appetites need to be sated, food needs to be cooked. Yesterday, you saw the complications of a pizza royale. Well, this evening, I'm going to just ease off the pedal very slightly and take things a little easier and make things a little bit more simple for those of you that are choosing to follow my cookery skills. Here in isolated southwest of France, where I live alone, the weather has taken a turn for the worse. And in fact, in a region that is rarely hit by potential snowfall, we truly have a forecast for that. So during the day when I saw the temperatures drop, I thought, how can I improve on a pizza royale and eat something this evening that is hearty and warming and filling? Not too filling because, as I may have mentioned before, I have a very small stomach and therefore a very small appetite. Well, this evening, to keep things easier, I've decided that I'm going to cook and eat, all in its entirety, I assume, a steak. Now, just wait one moment. I know many of you out there will be saying, well, what on earth is a steak? We've never heard of steak. Well, a steak is something that's peculiar to isolated southwest of France. You won't often find steak anywhere else in the world, in any country. No one's ever heard of it. It's a little well-kept secret that we like to keep here and we don't like to export. I think it's enough for me to say that a steak is a piece of meat. And it's a piece of meat whose origins are, you may believe this or not, a cow. A piece of steak is exactly as it says, it's a piece of a cow. There are many pieces of cow, as you could imagine. There are legs, there are ears, there's a nose, there's a tummy, there's a back, there's a side, there's a front. And that's where the pieces of steak come from. I'm not at liberty to divulge which piece of the cow this steak came from. But I'm on good authority that it is rather tasty. I'm only sad that wherever you shop anywhere else in the world, this piece of cow won't be available for you to buy and enjoy as much as I'm sure I'm going to buy, uh, enjoy it. Lots of advice about steak in this part of the world is that when you cook it in a frying pan, not in a steam cooker or a kettle or a saucepan, no, it has to go into a frying pan, which one would think then you're having fried food, which is incredibly bad for you in lots of ways this saturated congealed fat that you put into your tummy can only come from fried food. And yet why in this part of the isolated region of southwest France is steak cooked in a frying pan? Well, I can give you the answer. And the answer is, it's fast and it's delicious. Here I have a prepared steak. You can see that it's red and white. One may think that perhaps if it was some blue in there, it would also then match the colours of the French flag. However, if it was blue, potentially, I wouldn't eat it. They say in France that steak, when you cook it in a frying pan, and some really avant-garde chefs would then put it into an oven to finish it off. 
Well, my jury is out on that one, let me tell you. However, when cooking a piece of steak, you should be told that steak is cooked generally from a room temperature. That is to say that you cannot have a cold piece of steak straight into a frying pan. So I have this piece of steak here, almost within a room temperature. But I hear you ask this and it's a very relevant question. Which room? Because in any house there are rooms that are colder than others and there are rooms that are warmer than others. Which temperature should that be? Well today, in my attempts to create the perfect room temperature for this steak to be cooked, I've had this steak in a plastic bag and all afternoon I've had it close to my chest when I've been enjoying some afternoon television in front of a fire. But what better way to make a piece of steak room temperature warm by holding it close to you? So here we are with a piece of steak that is very warm. Perfect. And as I reach into my drawer, which I hope you are now becoming familiar with, you'll see that I have easy access to this knife. Now this knife is going to be used for a variety of reasons this evening in the cooking and the preparation and the eating of this steak. And the knife use will be revealed later on. But first of all, I'm missing something. Something integral to the cooking of this piece of meat. And you may have seen me reach across and find myself with an empty glass. Well, that empty glass is no good to anyone, is it? So bear with me as I cross to the other side of the kitchen to fill my glass up with a generous offering of fine red wine, which is perfect for steak, because they say, in educated circles here in the isolated southwest of France, red meat should be accompanied by, you've got it, red wine. To start cooking this steak, here I have some oil. Now oil is something that is readily available in most good supermarkets. Perhaps the cheaper chains would not have heard of it, but don't embarrass the shop staff if you ask for it and you get a blank look. Go to an upmarket supermarket and ask for cooking oil and they should know exactly what you're talking about. That's why they're in the good supermarkets. You have to have a little dash of the oil in the frying pan ready to fry this steak. So when you hear the noise of the oven top being pushed on, you can tell that the cooking process is soon to begin. Please, once again, if you ever find yourself in receipt of steak outside of the south of France, you must never, never cook this steak with a plastic wrapping. It would alter the taste completely and you just wouldn't enjoy that crisp, melted taste of plastic. It's not very nice. But I do think it's important that before we put that steak into the frying pan to fry, we would season this steak and we would season it well to really bring the flavours out. Here we have salt. Now in the southwest of France, we're very lucky to have salt in a pot that says sel. Now you have to understand a foreign language to know that sel is in fact salt and you're not buying something that you possibly couldn't use in food cookery. And what we have here as well, which I really don't think is available in, in any other country, is what they call rock salt. And we have a grinder at the base that grinds that rock into a fine powder. You can see how advanced the southwest of France really is in respect to the rest of the world. The same goes with the pepper. The peppercorns that fall off of the trees and lay on the floor 
are readily gathered up by local French farmers and put into jars such as this so that we can then grind them again into a fine powder. Now since I've been cooking, the oil in the frying pan has been getting to a rather nice hot temperature so that when the steak lies in the frying pan, it sizzles. And when it sizzles, you know that that steak is going to cook. Before I sizzle, I must imbibe. Truly is a delicious wine. Once again, only available in the southwestern of France. But I must reach back into my drawer. Alas, I forgot to bring something else out along with the knife. And this is a pair of tongs. A pair of tongs. Very simple gadget. It's a new invention here in France. I don't think it's been exported to the rest of the world. We're waiting to see with the idea and the concept of a tong catches on and goes elsewhere. But for now, the secret is safe here. And by this I can pick up my steak like so. As you can see, it really is rather a generous piece of meat. And then you place it very gently into the hot, sizzling fat. There's a very reassuring sound of meat being cooked. I would say that if you are in a household of vegetarians and vegans, for those of you that have been forced into that way of life, you must perhaps sometimes miss that reassuring smell and sound of cooking flesh. I know I would. To maintain perfect cooking for this steak, the recommended guidelines here in the isolated southwest of France is to cook it for approximately two minutes on each side. And that would ensure that you have a piece of meat that is pink in the middle once it's cooked. If you like to have meat that is still bleeding when it's cooked, then you would perhaps reduce that to just one minute per side. Now because this piece of meat is slightly bigger than a normal everyday piece of meat that's available here in the southwest of France, I shall increase that cooking time to maybe two and a half minutes each side. It's important that you seal the meat. And when I say seal, I don't mean seals that you see in the normal South Pole. You don't have seal and steak in the same dish. That would be wrong. If you're going to have fish with steak, it should be calamari or prawns or lobster. You're then creating a dish commonly known as surf and turf. But seal, that's wrong on every level. When I say seal, I'm referring to the fact that the meat has to seal to keep those delicious flavours of the cow inside the piece of steak. And it's important to have cow taste when you eat a piece of steak. For goodness sake, what's the point of having one if you don't? So while you've been on a slight pause there, what's happened here in the isolated southwest of France is that I've cooked that piece of meat for two and a half minutes and I've turned it over. What I've also done is I've added some butter into the pan that's frying and put a lid on the frying pan to make sure that the steam that comes off from the piece of cow that's in there is reverted straight back into the piece of cow, thus ensuring a very tender but moist piece of meat. If I could lead you over as well to a new Fandango thing here, and it's called a deep fat fryer. If you can see, I don't know whether you can see, but there is a deep fat fryer. That means the fat is very deep and it's very fatty. But what we have in here are pommes frites. If you can see, I'm also having pommes frites. It's a classic French invention. I think the English call them chips. Now I'm not sure about chips. The very name suggests something else. Very contrary to what we have here in the southwest of France. We have frites. 
And it's a much better sounding name to have with a piece of cow. So we're approaching the end of the cookery lesson for this evening because the cow is almost cooked and the frits are almost cooked. The trick behind any cookery and any successful master chef is to make sure that with the different elements that you cook, they are ready at the same time. It would be silly to cook a piece of meat to go and eat it and then think, I wonder if those frits are ready yet. And you go to the fryer to find they still aren't. And you finish your meal just eating frits when you haven't had that blessed union of cow and frits. So I'd like to thank you again this evening for joining me on my masterclass. And if you return tomorrow, there'll be another delectable menu choice for you to consider cooking at home. But don't forget, red wine is important. Bear with me for two more seconds and I'll be able to show you the next stage of this final piece of cookery. So at last, when the steak is finally cooked, it's like any good chef, good cook, good helper in the kitchen. If they know they've done a good job, what they need to do next is, well, rest. Cooking is an exhausting process and it really does take it out on me, I can tell you. And the same for the piece of cow. When it's cooked, it wants to rest. It says when it comes from the frying pan onto a plate, rest me. So here we have a piece of meat from a cow that is beautifully cooked and it's now resting before it's eaten and destroyed. Normally you would rest a piece of cow once it's cooked in a medium fashion for about three or four minutes. You may be witness to bleeding. Now don't be alarmed if it bleeds. This piece of cow is truly, truly diseased. Not diseased, deceased. So any bleeding is just circumstantial to the cooking process. Don't be upset. Don't think you're going to turn vegan or vegetarian. It's just a natural byproduct of any piece of flesh when it's cooked. And once it's stopped bleeding, once you put it on your plate with the fritz, it won't bleed anymore. Therefore, you won't have a juicy, slippery plate with this piece of meat to slide around in. So thank you for enjoying my masterclass once more. Tomorrow evening we may be visited by snow. I hope not. But if there is, then I'll make sure that I have a hearty meal planned for you and for yours apart from vegetarians and vegans. Happy Sunday to you all, and thank you so much for watching.